Hey everyone, Jeff here, also known as the Revit Kid. Hope you guys are doing well. Um, I'm kicking it old school, just talking to the screen. Um, something came up that I uh, kind of wanted to bring up and hear what uh, hear what everyone's opinions were on this. So I teach a class at the University of Hartford, and um, one of the assignments it's a parametric modeling class, and one of the assignments that I give is how to I ask the students to model a circular window or a round window. And um, it's interesting, um, without, I don't give them much information other than obviously teaching them how to build other stuff before that, but I don't give them much information. So it's always interesting to me to see um, what, what uh, methods and what maybe information they find online to help them sort of create this round window. So one thing I just wanted to talk about today was um, what you guys think is the right way to handle a, um, a round or circular parametric model okay not an ellipse not a rectangle a round model so what I'm going to do is just going to show you kind of um, the way I'm going to use a window because that's what we were using before kind of the way that I usually approach it um, and the reason I'm approaching it this way and maybe you guys have run into a similar thing as me but um, what I've run into in the past is if you were to draw a circle so let me just go to exterior wall so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, edit my opening. So I just created a window, a window family um, uh, using the window template. And what I've noticed, actually, what I should probably do is I should probably make my width and my heights the same because it is a circle after all. Okay, let me finish. So if I was to draw a circle, let me do that again. Okay, so what we're gonna need here is we're gonna need a reference plane that represents the middle. So I'm gonna draw a reference plane and I'm gonna dimension it. So DI on my keyboard is dimension and I'm gonna equalize it. Okay, now I'm just gonna make my width and my heights the same. Okay, so we have a rectangle. So now if I was to create a circle for this opening, so let me go to edit sketch. <clears throat> what I've noticed is that a lot of folks will draw a circle and what they'll do is they'll align the tangents, different aspects of the tangents of the circle, if they can, or they'll do something like this and try and lock it. And I've noticed that when you do that, so let's say even in here I try and do it. First of all, you'll notice that you can't always do it. And I've seen people do crazy ways. I think using two arcs will get it done. So if I did, uh, if I did two arcs here, I think maybe then, yeah, so if I do two arcs, I can hit the endpoints of this and lock it, and then do an arc here and hit the endpoint and lock it and stuff like that. And so that's the way I keep seeing different, different tutorials online as well as um, some of my students did it. And so um, the way I think, and I like to do circles, is I actually like to use a diameter or a radius um, as my parameter. So if I go to create an opening and I create a circle here, but the key with this method is you have to turn on the center mark. So if you select a circle in your sketch mode, there's a little option. Oh, you can't see it there. There's a little option over here called center mark visible. So I'm going to turn that on and you'll see I actually have a center mark. What I can do now is using a line, I can actually align and align the circle. And then from there, I can take my dimension, which is my radius. So I just uh, created a radius here and I can assign that to a parameter. So I can call this radius and then click finish. Now in my family types, you can see I have a height, I have a radius and I have a width. Well, my radius is gonna be two times my width or my height, depending on which one I'm using. I'm sorry, my width divided by two. Try that again. Doing this on the fly here, perfect. So now, if I'm a user and I go in here, I can say I want this to be a four foot wide window, and you can see it actually goes if I change the height. Now the other thing here is that the height and the width we're probably gonna want to be the same, right? So you can either use the same parameter or you can just make one equal the other. But now we actually have reference planes that we can dimension in our project environment for height and width, which is nice. 
but our circle it stays in the middle. And the reason I'm bringing this up is um, I noticed in some of my students' work, as well as um, if I tried it myself, that when you try and snap the tangent of a circle or, or the ends of an arc, um, and you try to lock them, I noticed that things can go wrong. And so what I wanted to do is show you sort of my method, which was, again, creating, let me get that out of the way there. When you're, when you're creating a, oh, let me change the scale, sorry guys. Okay, when you're creating a circle, as long as you have a center line, so that's what I'm creating with these reference planes, you can use the center mark of the circle, and then you can control the circles using a radius. I've always found this to be the most controllable and the easiest to predict what's gonna happen and the less likely to break. And so I'm honestly, I'm showing you guys this because I think uh, the whole center mark thing and doing that is kind of cool. But also I'm really curious, if you wanna comment below, let me know how you would approach a circle using parametric. Um, Cause I am truly interested. And like I said, there's a lot of information going on um, online that um, that is different. So. That's all I got for today. I thought it was a cool, quick tutorial um, to show you how I would dimension and uh, create a parametric circle, but also get an, a sense of what you guys might be doing for a parametric circle. So without further ado, that's all I got for today. Um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please subscribe. Um, if you're watching this on YouTube especially, please subscribe below. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.